I want you to know that I think I'm the luckiest man in the world. And I say this not only because I have the honor to be president of the United States, but particularly because I have the privilege of uh, speaking for so many and welcoming you back to Earth. 9,000 men in nine ships and 54 aircraft awaited the Columbia splashdown. At 0550, the Columbia splashed into the ocean. The Hornet was still 13 miles away. Navy frogman John Wolfram's team, Swim 2, was 10 miles away. It looked like Swim 1 would do the rescue as they were already at the splashdown site. However, the huge waves turned the Columbia capsule upside down. It took several minutes for the airbags to upright the module. This gave Swim 2, the designated rescue team, time to reach the capsule. Wolfram was the first man in the water. His job was to attach the sea anchor to stabilize the capsule. Once completed, he signaled Wes Chesser and Mike Mallory. They jumped from the helicopter with a 200-pound flotation collar. Together, all three positioned the collar around the capsule, then inflated it. The first raft was dropped into the water and inflated. The second raft was now dropped into the water and inflated upwind according to NASA's instructions to protect the frogmen from being contaminated in case of moon germs. They were required to use their open scuba gear during the process for protection from possible contamination. Clancy Hadelberg then jumped into the water and climbed into the second raft. The helicopter returned to lower Hadelberg's biological isolation garments and canisters of chemicals for the decontamination of the capsule and astronauts. Every precaution was taken to protect the outside world of any possibility of moon germs. Once Hadelberg had donned his isolation garment, the raft was brought aside the capsule so he could enter the first raft. Wolfram, Chesser, and Mallory then went back to their upwind location in the second raft while Hadelberg gave the astronauts their isolation garments to put on.
After the astronauts donned their biological isolation garments, bigs for short, they entered the raft to be washed down with the chemical solution. Adelberg had difficulties with the hatch door and the astronauts helped him secure it. Once closed, Adelberg sprayed down the space module with his chemical solution. After the capsule was washed down, Hadelberg washed down the astronauts. Helicopter 66 prior to the Apollo 11 mission also picked up Apollo 8 and Apollo 10 astronauts and later made Apollo 12 and 13 recoveries as well. As the recovery progressed, the sea state abated. Helicopter number 66 appeared above the capsule for extraction of the three astronauts one by one using a Billy Pugh net, named for the man who designed it. Wolfram, Chesser, and Mallory in the upwind raft then returned to the capsule and secured their raft to serve as lifeguards in case the astronauts were in need of help. As the recovery progressed, the sea state abated. Mike Mallory was given five cameras to take pictures for the Navy and AP press pool. He gave Wolfram one of the cameras to help him take pictures from the raft. Chester stayed in the water as a precaution for the astronaut's safety and to help with the Billy Pugh net if needed. This made the task a little easier.
The Apollo 11 command module had traveled 952,700 miles in eight days, three hours and 19 minutes, and landed just 10 seconds behind the flight plan time within one mile of its target point. When the astronauts disembarked their helicopter, they immediately entered the mobile quarantine trailer. President Nixon soon arrived to greet them. President Nixon waving to the astronauts. The curtains have been drawn. And there they are in the rear window. The president signaling for applause from the crowd. Astronauts gather in the window. Neil, Buzz, and Mike. I was thinking, as, as, as you know, as you came down, and we knew it was a success, and it had only been eight days, that this is the greatest week in the history of the world since the creation. Frank Borman says you're a little younger by reason of having going into space. Is that right? Do you feel that way, a little younger? We're a lot younger than Frank Borman. <laughs> <laughs> there he is over there. And <laughs> Come on over, Frank, so they can see you. They take that line down. Are they young? <laughs> it looks like he has aged in the last yeah. couple of weeks. Come on, Frank. Mr. Mr. President, the one thing I want to, you know, we have a, a poet in Mike Collins, and he really gave me a hard time for describing your words, uh, fantastic and beautiful. And you were, I counted them, in three minutes up there, you used four fantastics and two beautifuls. <laughs> May our country, afire with inventive leadership and backed by a committed followership, blaze new trails into all areas of human cares. See our enthusiasm and bless our joy with dedicated purpose for the many needs at hand. In the name of our Lord, Amen. Amen. As the USS Hornet approached, Wolfram climbed on top of the module and held onto the reinforced loop. He made a 1960s hippie-like fashion statement by wearing bright yellow and orange flower decals on his wetsuit. A seaman shot a line out to the module and Wolfram attached it to the loop before jumping off the capsule.
The capsule with its moon cargo was then hoisted aboard the USS Hornet. Mission accomplished. There are more videos and pictures at johnwolfram.com.